the classification of the plant we have two main classifications one is your cryptogams and the second one are the phenerogams okay cryptogams and the phenerogams when we look into the cryptogams we have the division in the format of like there are three of the divisions <laughs> first one is thallophyta then you have bryophyta then you have pteridophyta so if we start or if we look into the advancement from the very base level plants to the high level highly advanced plants so we have they like the complete chart in the, is in this format itself first you have the thallophyta then the bryophyta then pteridophyta then gymnosperms and then angiosperms these are the most primitive form and these are the most advanced form most developed forms right so when we look into the thallophyta you have <laughs> you have algae you have fungi bacteria like we, let's not go into that particular segment so just eliminate this okay <laughs> because they are not <laughs> just a second third uh, so you have you have the bryophyta in the classes of bryophyta so, so we have three main classes first is your hepaticopsida then you have anthropsida and then you have bryopsida then you have pteridophytes in pteridophytes there are four major classes 1 2 3 and 4 okay you need not to go into the depth of every class because that is not the point from where the question is asked so stick till the end of the class you'll get to understand which are the important pointers then you have the gymnosperms in the case of your phenerogams you have two divisions in cryptogams we have three divisions which are the three divisions first is thallophyta bryophyta then pteridophyta in case of your phenerogams you have gymnosperms and angiosperms when we look into the phenerogams now when we look into the gymnosperms in gymnosperms you have cycadophyta and conifer coniferophyta and then we when, when we look into the cotyledons when you look into the angiosperms so you have based upon the number of cotyledons dicots and the monocots so dicots and and monocots are the plants name the variety of the plants dicotyledonae and monocotyledonae these are the two classes that we have i am expecting that you know a basic idea related to how do we define the various hierarchy of the entire plant system right or the complete kingdom how do we define it right so what is it kingdom class order family genus species right so we'll be discussing about uh, that segment in the unit 9's presentation right so from that concept as well a question has been asked previously so for the time being just remember you have the main kingdom that is plantae then you have two sub kingdoms cryptogams and phenerogams in the cryptogams you have thallophyta bryophyta pteridophyta in case of your phenerogams you have gymnosperms and angiosperms okay so and then you have the further division now concentrate and understand from where the questions have been asked recently when you look into last 3 years of paper as and when we'll proceed in our pyq sessions you'll get to see yourself questions are majorly asked based upon the dominant phase based upon the double fertilization concept based upon what is the main complete concept behind a specific class and majorly the questions have like uh, recently the questions are asked from your bryophyta okay so we'll be discussing about each of these classes in short details so that you have idea about each one of them just check whether everything is clear to you or not till here if yes then we'll proceed further good evening kamini you're there in class after so many days quickly go through this everyone then we'll proceed
right since are an association it is a symbiotic association between an algae and a fungi they are not a separate class they are a association of a algae and a fungi together symbiotic association good evening anjali okay let's proceed further okay understand each of these classes properly now first is your thallophyta so thallophyta are what these are a group of plants that lack true stems true leaves and true roots okay what are these these are a group of plants that lack true stem roots and leaves that's why like their complete body their complete body is defined as a thallus that's why we call it a thallophyta okay what are the two main examples first one is your algae and second one are the fungi these are not true plants but they are included in this group due to the similar characteristic we do not consider the algae we do not consider the fungi as a plant but they have similar characteristic as they do not have a leaf they do not have a root they do not have a stem they just have a very simple undifferentiated body that is called as a thallus that's why they have made the initial primitive plants are included in a group or they are kept in a group known as thallophyta okay in addition to that remember one more thing Uh, lichens are a symbiotic association between the algae and the fungi now what do we mean by symbiotic association we have already discussed about this in ecology right association symbiotic mutualistic association that is both of these plants both uh, both, of, both of these components stay together so that one and the, the first party and the second party both of them can provide a positive benefit to the other one and as a result of the same they can complete their life cycle right so first one is your thallophyta second is your bryophyta after thallophyta the second stage of advancement is your bryophyta what are bryophyta these are non vascular plants which means they do not have a specialized tissue for the transportation of the water and the nutrients water and nutrient is the most important entity which is required for move for the growth and the development they are a non vascular plant that's why they are often found they do they usually have a very small size and they're often found in damp habitat damp is the habitat where there is a lot of water available they are usually found in that marshy areas right what are the three main types or three main classes in it we have mosses we have liverworts we have hornworts okay in 2022 or 2021 there was a question asked specifically from the classes of bryophyta we'll be discussing that question and at that time you have to recall this segment okay then you have pteridophyta so what are pteridophytas these are the next advanced classes of plant these are the vascular plants that reproduce via spores thallophyta do not have any differentiated body no root no stem no leaf bryophyta the ones which do not have a vascular plant they have advanced in their body but they still do not have vascular plant vascular tissues for the develop for the transportation can you write down which are the two vascular tissues everyone write down in the chat section which are the two vascular tissues that a plant have and what does it help in the transportation
yes xylem and phloem now uh, when we were in, when i was in class 10 uh, i had one of my tuition teacher the way she explained is still like it's still uh, very much crystal clear in my mind like because a uh, class 10 students usually like when we are in school we usually forget the difference between xylem and phloem so she wrote down flow uh, like phloem spelling and then she write down this particular word like in hindi it is for food if you pronounce food in hindi like if you pronounce food so the hindi alphabet the hindi word comes for right so this was one of the thing that she uh, yes foo for food so uh, she made us explain this particular thing back 11 years back but still it's very much crystal clear in my mind okay so just passing on the same thing remember this particular thing if anyone have any doubt like uh, whenever you have any confusion in this particular thing just remember this particular thing okay just remember this mnemonics you will not be forgetting it and i am expecting 10 years down the line when you will be teaching your students make sure that you pass on this particular thing okay so pteridophytas these are the vascular plants that reproduce via spores they have true stems roots leaves but they do not produce seeds so the advanced or characteristic that they lack is the seeds that means the next plant the next series of the advanced plant that we'll be having they'll be showcasing seeds right then over here in pteridophyta what is the most common well known group so ferns are the most well known group of the pteridophyta so remember about this then you have the gymnosperms gymnosperms are what these are vascular plants that produces seeds but they do not have uh, fruit enclosed in it that means what that means angiosperms showcase fruit development as well so you can see the advancement of the plant advancement in the body of the plant occurring right so gymnosperms these are the vascular plants that have seeds also but they do not have fruit their seeds are not enclosed within the fruits they have of, of, like they usually have exposed seeds that means that is often found on the cones right now common gymnosperms are what common gymnosperms include conifers cycads and ginkgo trees right now remember one thing uh, there is a very important and a very common example of a living fossil which is related to the gymnosperm plant okay i want you all to find that particular thing and keep a note of it because in the recent years questions have been asked related to the living fossil concept as well okay so remember about that and try to find out the example of the living fossils which is somewhere related to cycads or the ginkgo trees find out that example and keep a note of it okay then you have angiosperms angiosperms they are also known as magliniophyta so these are the most diverse and the most widespread group of the plants that we have so they are the vascular plants that have seeds which is enclosed within the fruit so thallophyta having undifferentiated body bryophyta these are the non vascular plants pteridophyta vascular plants having spores gymnosperms no spores they have seeds but seeds are not enclosed within the fruits Teri uh, angiosperms they have seeds but their seeds are enclosed within the fruits so remember about this now what are the majority of like the majority of the familiar plants that you have that is all your flowering plants shrubs herbivorous uh, herbaceous plants they all belong to this particular group right so make sure that you are going in a sequential manner you know about the entire if you remember this complete classification thallophyta bryophyta pteridophyta gymnosperm and angiosperms then if you remember the complete characteristics of the same you will never make a mistake okay i am expecting till here things are clear to you take your time quickly read this whatever problem you have you can ask otherwise we will be proceeding further Okay. Quickly read this, everyone. 
this class will be a like a very theoretical one but it's a very important segment for you to like for you to have a scoring and an upper hand because majority of the students will be skipping off